So Joe, we made it. Yep. That was an early start, wasn't that it? That was a very early start. That's why I look like this. And where are we? We are at Warrington and Vale Royal College up here in Warrington, which is dreadfully exciting. I think this is the electrical workshop. Yep. I think we're going to grab Paul Meenan and Richard Townsend yep. and drag them into that electrical workshop. Let's go and have a chat with them and see what, what the day holds. Okay, this should be fun. We're off and running then, we're in the first cubicle, we're here with Ben and Jack. We're going to see what they know and see if they can get a prize out of Richard Townsend. Go on and Rich, in we go. Right guys, it's a domestic, uh, domestic circuit, domestic installation. Various types of circuits and you're running two different types of socket circuit. What are they that you're installing? Can you name them? One's a ring range yeah. and a radial circuit. Close enough for me. Yep, we'll go ring final circuit. Yep, okay, so and a radial circuit. Can you tell me the difference? between the radial and the ring, please. Uh, radials, lights, and to do with bulbs coming on, and the ring mains to do sockets. So when you're wiring it, they must be slightly different. Oh yeah, they use two different types of cable. Can't deny that as an answer. Anything else that's different between a ring and a radial? Uh, you don't take it back to the Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Have you got a question? Generally, what size of cable would you use for a ring final circuit? 2.5 mil. Close enough. Yeah. And for a lighting circuit? Uh, 1.5 mm. Yeah, good answer. If we're going to select the overcurrent protection devices for both circuits, and I'll give you one, I'll give you one. For the lighting circuit you're doing now, what rated value of the overcurrent protection device would it be for the lights? Size is the fuse. Six, six amps. Good answer. And the ring final circuit? 32 amps. Do you know the type of breaker they would be? Um, you do. Type B. Type B? B, yeah. You notice that when he's doing that, he's like, give me the regs book, give me the regs book, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, so type B circuit breaker, really good. Okay, hello everybody, ladies and gents. Uh, I'm Paul Meenan. I started my life as an electrician and I'm going to do a little bit of a talk. I'm a volunteer for the IET. Um, you all know us from such publications as the Big Blue Book. Um, and I'm going to try and steer this as well, so please bear with me if I skip through it. So I'm going to just, that's what I'm going to try and cover in this presentation. Um, and I'm going to try and educate you about the IET, what we do, who we are, introduce some, some new terminology, some new phrases, stuff that you're going to encounter in your career at some point or another. So I'm Paul. I'm a chartered engineer. I'm a fellow at the IET. Got lots of letters after my name. Means something to me. Mystery to you guys. Um, more importantly, I started out as an apprentice electrician. I did my apprenticeship. Um, 
I had a bit of a challenge with it because I had a number of challenges in my apprenticeship, if this works. Getting a start. So my apprenticeship was really, really difficult because I couldn't get an apprenticeship anywhere. I rang up JTL and I was told, you're living the wrong postcode. Great, that's a great start. So I sat in a pub with the yellow pages, rung up loads and loads of companies, kept going, kept going, kept ringing people up and eventually found a house bashing company called EH Finn. They gave me a start as an apprentice. Unfortunately, the boss got very ill, company folded. I then rung up an agency who were new. You know, you didn't get agencies uh, back then. And they said, go work on a railway as a Sparks mate. Six weeks later, I was finishing my apprenticeship and I've been on the railways for most of my career. Um, these are some of the other challenges in Apprentice, because anyone who is an apprentice will know in the olden days you had no human rights whatsoever. As I didn't, I just completely admit, and it, it nearly broke me. The low wages, £16 a week, long hours, making tea, fetching and carrying, and banter, the stuff we're not really supposed to talk about, but it does. You know, go get a long weight, left handed screwdriver, extra bubble for level, bucket to catch the vault drop. I fell for every single prank under the sun. Um, the two last bits are quite important for me though. Uh, quality is not an extra, it's a given. Um, the guys I did my apprenticeship with were obsessed with doing a quality job. If you served your time, you had to be proud of what you did. You know, and you weren't going to call yourself an electrician until you could look at a wall, set it out, design it, install it, test it, and sign a bit of paperwork off. Um, and the other thing I learned is if you fail to do it properly, there's no tomorrow. Because if you fail to do it properly, you'll get electrocuted and you'll die, very simply. So that was one lesson I learned. Um, and yeah, I got all, as, as an apprentice, as you can see, I worked on pretty big stuff. I'd done some domestic as well over the years, but it was mainly railway stations, rewiring. Safety just was a new thing back then. Um, one of my prouder moments, I wired all the lighting at Excel. I was also captain of the Excel football team. We used to play football up there as well. Really bad, but we did. It was great. Good times. So learning for me was one of the most fun times in my life. And to be honest with you, I'm still learning now. Every single day we learn. Sorry it's been so waffly, but there you go. <clears throat> Any questions? So Josh has just volunteered Ethan to step forward and answer the questions in this booth. He's just <laughs> off camera there laughing at his mate. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, okay. So, Ethan, we're currently terminating a socket outlet. Agreed? And we've got the blue conductors. Name of the blue conductors, Neutral. nice and loud. Neutral. Neutral. Nice and loud. Yeah, and the brown? Live. Sorry? Live. Sorry? Live. Did you say line? Live. Did you say line? <laughs> yeah. Good, line conductor. It's really noisy in here. It's really tricky to hear them at times. Green and yellow conductor. CPC. What does CPC stand for? Circuit protective conductor. Yeah, circuit protective conductor. Brilliant. We're now wiring, I think, is it four sockets on this ring final circuit here? Pardon? We're wiring four sockets on a oh, ring yeah. final circuit, yeah. yeah. What size is the overcurrent protection device in the consumer? What size will the fuse be for that circuit? Uh, 30, 60. Just say it loudly, because you're right. 32. 32 amps, brilliant. Do you know what type of breaker it will be? They come with letters, don't they? What type will we be using? A. Brilliant answer, well done. And to absolutely crush it, and you haven't got one in your consumer, so you can't look, but you're going to tell me that the circuit needs additional protection, so that's on top of the 32 amp fuse. Another device, can you name that device that offers additional protection? It's RCD. RCD, CD, that's just confidence, isn't it? RCD. Have you got an RCD in your consumer's unit? No. Are you the poor relations of this college? Everyone else has got one. How come you didn't get one in this board? You want to have a word with them about that? Okay, really good. Well done, thank you for being so brave. Come in. Okay, ladies and gents, thank you very much. So we've had quite a heated debate on who wins what and what prizes go to who, but we'll get straight on to first place. And in first place, which is supported and sponsored by County Electrical Wholesalers, um, the chap who has come in first, and he impressed all of us, we have to say, uh, Ethan Kenny Jones. Second place, Bay 11, Jack Spruce, Ben Gerard. Up you come. Uh, third place, 
Bay 3A, James Gray and Connor Chadwick. Yeah, I just wanted to say, lad, to give it away for you. Yeah. When I was coming around and chatting to you about professionalism and stuff like that, the answers that you gave were the answers that I would expect from seasoned electrical professionals, yeah? People who are used to working on site, people who are used to going into people's houses. You showed real maturity and respect and also humility and a willingness to learn. And I thought that was really, really important, really special. Uh, so really well done on that. I didn't get any better answers than that all afternoon. So good work, really good work. Yeah, well done, Thank you for inviting us down. And I think all of us here need to thank Dave and Nick for all their efforts. The times that Dave was telling me that he was getting up and getting to work and the effort and stress that he's put into it as well. Yeah, okay, so I think we can give them a massive round of applause. And again, I'll, I'll reiterate it, and we've talked about it, me and Joe, extensively, it'll be the massive conversation on the way uh, home. How well everybody conducted themselves. You were under a lot of pressure, you're working hard, people walking in and out of your cubicles. We never heard one cursive word. We didn't hear anyone lose their rag with the person they were working with. You just pushed on and worked hard. And that is uh, an amazing credit to everybody here. And if nothing else, that's what you should take away from it. If you were on a construction site behaving like you did today, mm -hmm. that would be the attitude and the work ethic that's expected of somebody working in the construction industry. So give yourself a round of applause, lads, and thank you. Yeah.